What's going on, everybody? <laughs> so I was doing my videos for today and tomorrow, and I guess when I recorded yesterday, I somehow have no volume on the videos. Don't know how that happened. Kind of crazy. So I wasn't going to do a voiceover of the videos or nothing, because it would just been pointless. It was just some soccer. But, I mean, the biggest thing was out of... Uh, 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 oh, um, Topps Chrome Bundesliga was a Bellingham Blue uh, non-auto out of 150. And then out of the new uh, UEFA champions was a 5 out of 5 auto of Vander Beek or something like that. But I gotta get that stuff up on eBay tonight. Minus the Bellingham. That'll go to Graydon. Alright here. So, I know you guys are sitting on top of it. HGA messed up on another label. I'll talk about that here shortly. I mean, it's not to blast, just... I know a lot of people think I troll HGA and everybody else. Really not. I talk bad about a lot of the companies out there with their errors. I just think it's uncalled for. But I'm going to show a couple recent pickups that I got. Uh, I haven't really shown much lately. I was at a hockey break a while back. Had the Penguins, of course. And I got rid of the uh, Funkos, so now the camera will focus on these cards a lot better. That was the issue with a lot of this stuff. So, yeah, just some Penguin stuff. I mean, it's all rookies. Oh, Teddy Bluger's not cool hockey puck. And then rookie sensation of uh, Oliver. Jersey thing. Okay, so you guys will catch me on to it. Some of my recent pickups. You guys are going to see a big pickup I just did today once it gets in. This here is 96, 97, or 95, 96. I forget now. I've been wanting one of these for a while, and these are really hard grades, and I'll show you why I panned. Come on. Come on. If you look where my thumb is, these gold foils on these are real hard to grade. This here is just more for myself than anything. I may grade it. I may not. I don't really decide. I probably won't. Uh, my idea was to eventually one day get a 9 or 10 in this. This was just really well centered. But... Mary Lemieux Auto, and if these, funny enough, it was numbered out of 1066 from back in the day. You don't see these come up a whole lot. Oh, here it is. Yeah, it was 96, 97. So, I picked it up. I mean, something I always wanted to have again, because I couldn't get it when I was a kid. All right. Up next, Ovechkin Auto. I believe this is 1213 Artifacts. I'll look on the back here. Yep, 1213 Artifacts. Really good condition. Obi is going to break a little bit of records probably hopefully this next year, so I've been picking his stuff up slowly. It is a sticker auto. Something I'll send off the PSA, hopefully 9s it, maybe 10s it. And finally, Big Ben's last season. Picked this up. His stuff has not been like... Most of the quarterbacks that have his resume, and I'm not talking about the resume of, you know, what happened with the girls and stuff. I'm talking about overall with Super Bowl wins and everything. But this is a 10. Very hard grade. Almost black labeled. And my idea is I've been a big Ben collector since he came out of his rookie year. I'm going to probably unload a lot of his stuff when he retires and then hits Hall of Fame the rest of it. Um, and I'll move on to the next quarterback that you know, I think is going to be good and lands in Pittsburgh and puts some money into it. But, Grant, he has done his job for me. So, pretty cool overall. This is the uh, rookie premiere. Very hard grade. I believe the pop level on this is low on 10s. I want to say it was like 16, maybe. I can't remember. But I found one. Won it. It was an afternoon auction. Said, what the heck, let's take it. I don't think there's anything else laying here I need to show. I don't think so. It's office cleanup day today, too. All right, so as I said, HGA did mess up onto a label again. It's all over Instagram. And, wow, it was pretty messed up. I ain't going to lie. But, again, I'm not here to troll them or troll any company out there. But when we're paying hard-earned money to have our cards graded, I mean, you should make sure labels are right. And this goes in the issue with all these people taking jobs now in grading companies that have no idea what they're doing. I mean, think about how many graders are grading our cards now, either PSA, Beckett, or wherever, and they've never been a collector, they don't know about the hobby, or they just got into it, 
So they don't have experience, you know, 25, 30 years. But it's hard to find somebody that's willing to take that type of paycheck, too, to grade that they're offering starting off, too. All right. Boom. There we go. So as you guys can see, it's a Kyler Murray. I'll blow it up a little bit there for you all. Kyler Murray. And look up here. 2019 Panini Chronicles Gridiron Kings. R.J. Barrett. I, I mean, I don't know how that makes it through. I could see if they would have put, like, Kyle Murray and Forgotten R or something like that. But, you know, that's why you have a QA or a QC1, QC2, whatever it may be out there to review this stuff. And it's just not happening. People are just flying through, grabbing money, pushing stuff out. And then we have to take the time out to resend it, get it re-slabbed, re-labeled, and back to us. You know, by then, if this is a newer card and all the cut, we'll just say all the grading companies are open, I can lose two weeks of money onto something new like this, and it just it's just horrible, horrible across the board onto any company out there that's you know sending this much stuff out there. And I, I mean, this is going to be probably a little bit of a topic on Friday's night overtime. But uh, if you guys noticed, and I was looking up some PSA 10s, and I was thinking about sending some stuff, I know, to SGC. I had my issues with them. But I looked at what an SGC 10s were selling for compared to PSA 10s. I mean, some of them sell at like 50% of the price. I just don't see the profit margin onto that stuff and me doing it at $30 a card when... The value is not there, and when they're getting sold, it even if it's a buy it now or even the auctions, it it does not make sense. I can understand. I mean, H or SGC was like closing the gap. I think at one time during the hype of it all, I want to say they were like at eighty eighty five percent on certain cards, a ten to a ten, you know, from SGC ten to a PSA ten. And now I'm just really debating on what to do with a lot of stuff. The other thing I've noticed, even with HGA, their prices have been coming down to what their original value was at that initial height. I don't know what that means, really, overall, for the market. You know, I'm going to do a little bit more digging onto it, but I've noticed it, and I know a few other people have noticed it, too. So now, you know, we're grading with other companies. And just say, for an example, let's think of something good here. I don't want to use Jordan Rookie because that's on the tip of my tongue. Let's use Zion Williamson Silver Prisms. A PSA 10 versus an SGC 10, or we'll even say if HGA even gives out 10s, I have no idea. But if you look even at 9.5, it, it's just a huge shift in price. I would almost rather... Spend the extra money and get it graded quicker by PSA just because of profits onto it. So, a lot of thought going into this this week to where, you know, I've been doing some numbers and stuff, looking at stuff like this. And I, I can remember a time when Beckett nine, Quad 9.5s were very close to a PSA 10 in price. Probably... Two, three years ago. And now look at the difference. So you really have to start thinking, like, what are you going to do to maximize profits versus what you're getting out of your boxes? At the same time frame, you got to worry about, like, stuff like this coming back from any grading company to where you got to get in touch with them, wait for them. Maybe they'll send you a label. Maybe they'll set how you send it in. They'll refund you the order or whatever it could be. I have no idea what each company does on to it. Then it gets there. Do you really think that's their priority to fix it? I mean, I don't know. Maybe some companies it is, some companies it's not. And if you wait two weeks, you could lose a good chunk of money on to because you've already pulled it, say, release day or release week that week, mailed it. We're going to say you, you, you use the top service to get it back, you know, in a week or two. And when you do, you get this. And then you got to send it back. Hopefully it's priority. It could be another month until two, three weeks till you see it back. Maybe even a month. Now all of a sudden the market dips and you lost money. 
I don't know how concerned they are about it, but, you know, it's stuff that I start looking at like that. But this was up on Instagram, and, I mean, it's floating all over. Everybody's copying pictures of it. So I figured I'd show it. I mean, it's quite comical in a way, and it's also embarrassing, too. I mean, it's funny. Oh, look at R.J. Barrett. I mean, Kyler Murray, you know, jokes like that. But it's embarrassing to see stuff like this. This should not have gone out. And I don't know what they're doing to make it right, but it seems that if you blast somebody on social media, they jump through hoops to make it better than when you talk to like their customer service on the phone. Just what I've noticed and what a couple people have told me. So, and a couple people have had errors with great with grading companies. I don't want to mention which ones. And where they've talked to their customer service and they were like, wow, really? And they blast them on social media. And guess what? Yeah, they were like given uh, overnight labels and had to card back within a week, which is, you know, outstanding compared to what they were told originally. So just some food for the thought, everybody. I figured this would be a quicker video today. It also lets me get to test a few things out. Um, Museum Baseball got pushed late Friday. It will not be out this week. That comes out now first week of July. I will have a draft. Uh, Prism draft box come in, which we know probably isn't going to have anybody in if you guys have watched the case breaks. You're lucky to get a quarterback auto per case, and it may not be good. The color blasts are like one per ten cases. At least that's what was wrote up onto it. Uh, other than that, Pokemon end of the week. I'll probably push that to next week, and I'll probably find something else fun to break. Oh! One last thing, uh, Friday night's overtime. We're going to open up, um, I, I did tell you guys, Eric from GMG will be on with us. But me and CBC are going to do a little box war starting it off. So something different offhand, a little box war between us. Um, so maybe we try try something a little different to open up the night of overtime with. But all right, that, guys, let me know what you guys honestly think about this, you know. I know a lot of people are going to want to bash HGA because it's HGA, because they like Beckett, PSA, SGC, whatever it may be, you, you know, whatever you want to use for your grading company out there. But overall, just label mess-ups onto this stuff has been notorious. And I think it's because being rushed, and then also because you're hiring people that don't know the sports card industry at all. I don't know. My thoughts on to it, everybody. All right, guys, have a good week. I'll catch y'all next video.